The first goal that I have, and to me this is probably the most important one, is 17 and a half inch arms. And it has officially happened, 17.5 inch arms, a goal I set to achieve this year. I wasn't sure on the timeline, but before the end of year, it has now happened. So I'm going to be doing what I can to try and sneak up a little bit closer to 18 before the year, see if I can get to 18, maybe 18.5 at some point next year, which would be pretty sweet considering I'm 5'9" for reference. So today is going to be a workout vlog. I'm going through a pull day. I modified my split recently in terms of exercise sequencing and exercise selection. So one thing I did do was remove RDLs from my lower days so I could add a Penley style row to my pull days. In this way, the RDLs aren't impacting my ability to do a non-chest supported row. My options are somewhat limited at a home gym, so this makes all the sense in the world, and I can actually dedicate more volume to hamstring curls too and not have to train them in a more fatigued state. So up next, I'm doing a little bit of lat work, and usually I've prioritized lats over traps, so today I have been officially switching to doing some of my trap work first, which the Penlay rows do a good job of since you can flare your elbows, and of course it's a horizontal pull. The traps work really well with just a little bit of body English, a little bit of cheat, and a nice controlled eccentric. So it's a similar concept to a power shrug in a way, it's just a horizontal pull instead of a vertical shrug. So the hammer strength, single arm, lat pull downs, this is one of my favorite lifts for lats. The range of motion, I don't try and go too extreme on here. And it's not because you're going to lose sensation or lose connection with your lats or anything. But there is a little bit of truth to that, where if your range of motion is too extreme, sometimes your lats do start to lose leverage if you're going too high or too low and other muscles can take over. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but for myself, I don't want any other muscles to be a limiting factor. And this slightly smaller mid-range range of motion helps me just maintain tension on the lats. It's a little bit bro sciencey, but there's definitely some truth to it. Up next, I'm doing a semi-supinated seated cable row. This works great for targeting the lats as well, specifically the upper lats. The closer grip works really well and it lets your lat wrap and stretch around your rib cage, definitely using that to your advantage. So whenever I train rows to target the lats, I like to go with either a neutral or semi-supinated grip and I always like to have it shoulder width at the widest and I actually prefer slightly narrower grip. So when it comes to rows, what I'll typically do is if the row isn't including some body English for the majority of the set, trying to keep that consistent, I'll do as many reps as I can with a mostly strict form, and then I'll log my reps past failure too. And this is typically going to be cheat reps instead of partials, since I think it's a better idea just to easily get that cheated concentric and control the eccentric nice and slow, since that's where most of the stimulus happens anyways. Up next, this machine, not this machine, I don't know what I'm talking about, this movement, dumbbell pullovers i haven't done in years so i'm not going too crazy with the weight or anything just 100 pounds for now basically the point on this is to get a crazy stretch on the lats and actually to target the long head of the triceps ever so slightly it doesn't go through a massive range of motion since the elbows are obviously staying still i'm not getting a good elbow bend and it's not changing the degree of my elbow or anything but it gets a really good stretch and it might actually help a little bit since the shoulders are moving with the long head and when i'm chasing those 18 plus inch arms and i'm getting close to it uh, i figured this couldn't hurt and it will also get me a nice stretch on the lats just from a different angle so i wasn't going too too crazy with pushing to failure here but since it's a new lift that i haven't done in years failure hit me like a wall to the point where i actually didn't even fully attempt to get my last rep because i knew for a fact that i wasn't going to get it so strength weight reps should go up really relatively quickly as I relearn technique and just get that movement fundamentally sound for myself again. So up next, Smith Machine JM Press. The pullovers actually did fatigue my triceps quite a bit just because it's a novel stimulus. So on here, I had to reduce the weight ever so slightly and I still got slightly lower reps than usual, which is okay. It's okay for now. If my reps keep staying in a lower rep range, I will reduce the weight and just work back up from there, which is totally fine. The weight that you're using is somewhat arbitrary anyways, especially outside of progressive overload. Up next, I did add in easy bar overhead extensions. I've never really liked doing these without back support, but I figured I'd give it a shot. It actually, it actually felt pretty nice. So I'm going to stick with these. 
only doing one set on the day I do pullovers because that's another set that I can count that extra long head stretch towards. But this, of course, my elbow goes through a dynamic range of motion. So this gets me a crazy stretch. And again, since I haven't done it in forever, failure just hit me like a wall. And I had to do this weird little behind the neck push press to get the bar over my head because I didn't just want to drop it on the floor behind me from four feet up. Probably break my floor and my bar. Incline pushdowns to finish off the triceps. This is much higher volume than I have been using recently. Keep in mind, every lift is only two sets. The overhead extensions were only one set. So with these, uh, the volume is slightly increased. I, it's just a little experiment to see if I can keep my arms growing. Of course, I know what works, and it is relatively lower volume for my arms, which I'll talk about in a future video very soon. But why not try something else? I've, I've had success, and if this doesn't work, then so be it. I know it works, and I know what I can go back to. But I figured it's worth a shot where I'm always trying to experiment and learn new things. So with these, I like to go very controlled and slow on the eccentric, use a little bit of an inverted shrug and a little bit of force to push the weight down, and then do these tiny little partial reps past failure just to get everything I possibly can out of this movement. And then here's a little physique update and showing off the Barbell Apparel Ultralight Tech T. I did want to let you guys know that Barbell Apparel still having that Black Friday early access sale for any jeans, chinos, or pants. 99 bucks. Sale starts now. Or you can get the upgraded Athletic Fit 2.0 jeans for 119 So good deal, good discount if you're looking for some new jeans. I highly recommend it. And then this Ultralight Tech T incredible incredible fit shows off the delts and the arms so nicely it's just a perfect fit and i've been wearing this thing or other colors basically every day